I've been an Annihilator fan since the first album came out. I was lucky to meet the band in the early days. This is a picture of me with bass player Wayne Darley in 1990. And I saw many of their shows. I'd like to say only good things about the band, but as always in these rankings I've got to start with the bottom of the list. Jeff Waters did this single-handed with a drum machine while he was going through personal problems. To prepare for the ranking, I listened to this record for the first time in the new millennium and wished I hadn't. First album with new singer Dave Patton. Not very memorable to me, except Rage Absolute which stands out from the rest. It's the most aggressive track. Some really sick stuff on this one, from the bottom here to cannibalism, yet hardly songs I care much about, sorry. Altering the altar, for example, is an awkward attempt to bring in some keyboards. The Way is a rock and roll tune in the tradition of Bad Child, which was much better. My favorite song is One to Kill, that's a great speedy number. Feast is an album that sounds like an attempt to modernize Annihilator, which shows in tracks like Smear Campaign or No Surrender. The Triple CD DVD is a great package with the Wuckin Live show and the re-kill recordings, but just ranking the studio album itself ain't none of my faves. The latest album is always the most difficult one to place in a ranking. Sometimes you overrate it because you are enthusiastic about the new songs, but the novelty effect fades away later. Sometimes you underrate it because some tunes need more time to grow on you. To give an album a fair rank, you need to know, did this CD end up on my shelf after listening a few times, or do I still play it five years later? And I don't know that yet for Ballistic Sadistic. My guess is, it will not become an Annihilator classic. Ask me again in five years, my opinion may have changed. Many LPs have a stronger A side than B side because bands tend to move their best songs to the beginning of the album. Schizo Deluxe feels like such a case. Kicks off with the great Maximum Satan, followed by the hyperspeed attack Drive and the groovy Warbird. Yet after that, you don't always find the same level of awesomeness. Still, a recommendable album. One of my favorite artworks showing little demons wreaking havoc in your brain. Beware. The self-titled album is a bit more anthraxy than others, if you know what I mean. Playful, groovy, makes you jump around. The zombie face cover artwork is abysmal though. It's the only one without the famous band logo, which makes the sleeve look like a random death metal band or something. Misleading. Good album with no weaknesses worth mentioning. With Jeff Waters back on vocals, it's reminding me of Refresh the Demon Days. Annihilator made a tongue-in-cheek tribute to metal here with Army of One, while doing more serious thrashing too in Operation Annihilation or Downright Dominate. By this time, Jeff Waters was so convinced that Dave Patton would finally be the definitive Annihilator singer that they included a bonus disc with re-recorded older songs, so Patton could sing King of the Kill or Refresh the Demon. Metal is simply enjoyable, one of those albums I played more often than others. With Aaron Randall on vocals, the third album went into a softer, more melodic direction. Thrash fans usually don't like soft and melodic, that's why they are thrash fans. 
The early 90s, however, were the time when Metallica had a huge hit with Nothing Else Matters, or Queensryche -like with Silent Lucidity. Suddenly, everyone wanted to try acoustic guitars in unplugged sessions. Annihilator released their ballad Phoenix Rising as a single, an obvious attempt to be more commercial, but it did not become the big hit they hoped for. There are more melodic tunes on the album, Snake in the Grass or Sounds Good to Me, for instance. Then there are a few average tunes, fillers like No Zone or Don't Bother Me, which Jeff could probably write in his sleep. So what are the redeeming values? The title track has become a live favorite, Night Jumps Queen is great fun, and there is Brain Dance, one of the most brilliant moments in Annihilator history. When the album came out, I remember I listened to it together with two friends of mine and we all agreed unanimously they won't play this live. It's much too crazy with all those stops and breaks. We were wrong, they did play this live. Probably because they are crazy and they are Annihilator. I was also wrong with my mistrust towards Phoenix Rising. Annihilator did not continue into this melodic direction and today I really like this song. So, even if Set the World on Fire is definitely not a typical Annihilator album, it deserves a ranking at least in the middle of the field. Carnival Diablos, the first of two albums with ex-overkill guitarist Joe Camo on vocals. I knew him even before when he was in Leech Lord. The menacing Time Bomb and the rocking Shallow Grave are two of my favorite tracks I'd include on a best of compilation anytime. Surprises may have been missing, but Annihilator delivered what the fans wanted. Refresh the Demon was a straight continuation from King of the Kill with many good songs like the title track, Pastor of Disaster, or Ultra Paranoia. After the disastrous Remains album, Jeff Waters needed some time off, and then got a real band lineup together with familiar faces including drummer Ray Hartman and Randy Rampage, singer on the debut album 10 years ago. Criteria was an opportunity to make some musical references to the early days of the band. From the opening track Bloodbath, there is a new energy and revivified thrash spirit which would fortunately survive on the following albums, even if the reunion with Randy lasted only for one tour. If you ask me which Annihilator album was the most brutal, this is a likely choice. Ah, do your worst. Consider songs like Cold Blooded or Primetime Killing, it just blows you away. My personal favorites are Striker and Firepower. By the time of the fourth album, after many lineup changes, Annihilator officially had become the Jeff Waters project, him taking over the lead vocals as well. With great songs like Annihilator, Bad Child, King of the Kill, the band was back on track though. Check out some songs on my channel which were filmed live on the tour for this album. It's the best Annihilator headline show I've ever witnessed. All the big thrash metal bands had arrived in the mid-80s on the scene, Exodus, Megadeth, Testament, Overkill and so on. Annihilator started just a few years later, but the debut album made clear immediately they played a style of their own on the same high quality level. I needn't say more, if you watched until now you know the record. The second album remained the only one with singer Coburn Farr, ex Omen. Never Neverland includes a catchy hit single with Stonewall, but it was not lacking brutal material like the demo classic Phantasmagoria or the aggressive I Am in Command. The title track is a scary psycho horror tune while Kraft Dinner contributes the funny bit. 
you get a bit of everything here which Annihilator do really well. And the combination of elements is still so much joy to listen to 30 years later. To me, it's the most perfect album they ever did. Thanks for watching.